Hi, Steve. Well, that was a change in tone, wasn't it? Um, but you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Uh, it's it's so easy to get very, very depressed about the apparent lack of positive direction um, that we're taking here on planet Earth. Uh, it does seem to be a downward, downward spiral. And what you were saying about human nature and its connection to the animal kingdom is is, is bang on, but up to a certain extent. I mean, uh, as to the best of my knowledge, um, we are the only race that is self-aware. Um, we understand the concept of our of our destiny, of our mortality. Um, we know that we have travelled a path in order to arrive where we are today, and we know that there is a path yet to be travelled that will take us to where we think we want to be as opposed to where we need to be to accomplish um, what's required of us as as people. Um, and as adults, we, we do tend to carry with us an awful lot of emotional baggage, which then manifests itself as obstacles and hurdles that we then have to, or again, that we then think we have to surmount in order to get to the, this, this place. Uh, which might not necessarily be true. It's uh, again, it's all a case of perception. But the animal kingdom and, to a certain degree, children um, don't carry this weight with them. They are unhindered by it. Um, an animal will kill, um, but it will kill to protect its food, its its uh, its mate, its offspring, uh, its territory, and this is all down to survival. Um, and then when the threat passes, that animal will revert back to doing what it was doing immediately before the threat appeared, um, just getting on with life in the here and the now. And again, kids, as I say, are kind of similar. Um, you, you'll see these stories on the news where a child has been in an accident and has lost a foot or, or a hand or an arm, and they'll show the you know the kid in the, the, the playground or out in the yard playing with their friends and just simply getting on with life um, you know they're not sort of thinking they're not projecting ahead thinking well that's my career as a as a hockey player or as a long distance runner or as a ballerina down the tubes because they haven't considered those aspects of their future yet they're, they're like animals and they live in the here and the now um, and that actually is you know they're, they're kind of lucky in that respect because you know if I lost my hand I'd be thinking well I'm, I'm gonna lose my job I'm not gonna be able to pay the mortgage or the bills and all of a sudden reality comes crashing in on me like a, a collapsed building um, but th this ability for for a human being to try and foresee what's going to happen I think leads us down some very very dark paths um, I mean, you were talking about things like road rage and uh, just random acts of violence that seem to occur. I mean, uh, it's 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 when you have situations like a like a drug dealer, you know, he's thinking ahead. I'm going to need drugs soon because I'm about to run out, and in order to get drugs, I need money. I don't have any money. I know that guy coming out the Seven Eleven does, um, and he'll go and rip the guy off, mug him, God knows, kill him you know, um, to get this money, which is no different in many respects to one country invading another country, um, because that the country they're invading has something that they don't, or has, or has something that they want, um, oil being a, a good example in this pol current political climate. Um, it's a country looking down the path ahead of them and taking steps to ensure that they those hurdles are surmount surmounted. Um, not often with the planet's best interests at heart, if it's on a government or countrywide scale. But I, I mean, I'm not here to sort of provide any answers because I simply don't have the intellectual capacity to do so. Uh, I'm just simply airing my two cents worth, as I often say. I mean. I, I don't tend, as I've said before, I don't read newspapers and I don't uh, watch television news because every single time I do, there's always a story that will further erode my faith in my fellow human beings, which is probably why I spend a lot of time here on YouTube, um, because this seems to have the exact opposite effect. 
uh, every time I come on here, my faith in uh, in people is replenished considerably. Um, YouTube does seem to bring out the best in people. Um, how I'm not quite sure uh, why there's this tidal wave of decency going back and forward <laughs> between people, and then you t step outside your door. And you know, there's people. Me, 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 come on, get out of the way. You know, and just uh, like I was saying prior to Christmas when we were shopping. You know, trolley rage, <laughs> trolley rage. The fact that there's even a term for that um, says an awful lot about the the the, con the human condition at the moment. Um, I mean, Edmund Burke, uh, the British statesman, said a very wise thing in that he said, that "In order, all that is necessary for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing." Uh, and I, that is very, very true. Um, I like to think of myself as a decent, moral, upstanding member of society, but ultimately, what am I doing to try and change that for the better? Uh, the sad admission is that I'm really doing nothing. I'm, I'm in here hiding from the world and escaping via YouTube to, to where I know I can find warmth and, and gratitude and praise and, and see smiling faces. Um, to the extent that it's, it's kind of what's the point in going outside and interacting with my fellow human beings when I can do better here uh, but it also makes me think about things like uh, just prior to the, the, the current war in Iraq there, there was all these demonstrations these worldwide demonstrations every major city millions of people took to the streets armed with cardboard and bed sheets um, to get their point across about how unhappy they were about the war and what if it <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me what effect did <coughs> what effect did that actually have on the war in Iraq none whatsoever uh, the war went ahead and people started dying and are continuing to do so today so simply saying <coughs> excuse me simply saying words i don't think helps um, but it's safe isn't it it's safe to stand in a big crowd and say, no war, no war. Um, Kay, actually, on her uh, Our World uh, video response, you know, putting your hand up with a message on it, um, said that uh, words followed by actions gets results, um, which would imply that words followed by inaction gets you nowhere. And I think that's actually quite true. But what is it? What do we do? What can we do? Um, how do we make a stand? How do we get a message across um, that will be taken seriously? Do we... You tell me. Um, we have to stand together as a, as a people, not as, a, as Americans, as British, as French, German, Australian, what have you. Um, and we also have to step outside of religion. Um, we have to look upon ourselves as inhabitants of the planet Earth, not of continental United States or Europe or Christian, Muslim, Buddhists, what have you. We have to stand together as, as a united people against the, the tyranny that is being met out by in theory, the very people that we have supposedly put in power. Um, how do we do that? I don't know. As I said, um, do we go on strike? A worldwide strike for one day? No utilities, no services, no transport, no deliveries, no healthcare, no... No, we can't do that because society is now structured in such a way that we... we we simply can't. It would be too dangerous. Um, the governments basically have us where they want us, uh, wrapped around their little fingers. Um, I mean, society is such a complicated structure. There are systems at the top with subsystems below that, and each subsystem has subsystems. It's like a huge house of cards, 10 miles wide by 10 miles long by 10 miles high. You know, you pull one of those little cards out and you know, things will start to collapse um, to the detriment of everyone. So we can't afford to make a stand. 
So we're forced to kind of sit here on the the bylines and just watch. Um, unless someone has another idea. Um, like I say, I don't have the answers. I, I'm i just a passenger as well, um, with a window seat <laughs> to the to the world as well. But anyway, I've done my usual and gone on far too long. Uh, I can see that I'm now into the 10, ten minutes, so um, I'm going to sign off. Um, and I'll speak to you all again very, very soon, hopefully. Take care.